Welcome to my backyard. I'm Joe. We're hanging out doing motion graphics Camtasia on a beautiful day. And I wanna give you a trick today that I think you're gonna be able to use in all kinds of ways in your videos. I'm gonna show you how to make radial gradients. Now, if you've been to this channel before, you've probably seen my linear gradient tutorial. If you haven't, definitely check it out because linear gradients are an also, also a really great technique you can do in Camtasia. But today I'm gonna to show you radial gradients. That is sort of of the circular variety. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to make animated treatments with them that are just stunningly beautiful. And uh, not only can you use them for backgrounds for like titling or intros, but you can also use them for overlays like this. Isn't that cool? It looks kind of Instagram-like, no? So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now we're gonna move over to the annotations bin and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select shapes tab at the top and I'm gonna go to the bold style set and I'm gonna go ahead and grab this uh, gold default uh, circle and I'm gonna drop it onto the timeline and uh, I think I'll shrink it just a little bit and now I'm gonna move over to the visual effects uh, bin which sometimes is hidden under the more button here but uh, in this case I have just enough screen height to show it and I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to the drop shadow effect and I'm gonna drop that on now I'm gonna move over to the uh, properties panel here and you can see I have my drop shadow effect I'm gonna go ahead and move the angle to underneath the shape and I'm gonna go ahead and select white so I can actually see what's going on with the shadow here. And now I'm just gonna crank the sliders so that I have offset, blur, and opacity all maxed out, okay? So uh, just like that, I have created what will be my source for the radial gradient. And that is the uh, little fall off, this little drop shadow we've created. So in order to hide the gold circle, all I need to do is group this. So I'm gonna hit Command G on the Mac. I believe it is Control G on Windows. And, uh, and now I'm just going to navigate up to the top of my Camtasia interface and you'll see this little crop tool next to the pointer and the uh, panning tool. And I'm going to go ahead and select that and then I'm just going to pull down that center node at the top there, or that center control point. And just like that, I have a radial gradient source. It looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and call this group. you got to name your group so you remember what they are as you... Uh, pass these on or, or reuse them down the road. Uh, let's call it radial gradient source. And uh, while we're at it, let's go ahead and, and just stretch this out a little bit so we can actually see the title. Okay, so now I, I need to make this just a little bit brighter to reuse. So I'm going to go ahead and do a color adjustment. So I'm going to apply color adjustment. And, uh, and I just want to tweak these values until I have something that looks brighter but not uh, but not like you know you could kind of see where you start to get the the circle defined at the center we really don't want that here and now in order to to actually use this thing um, I'm gonna apply a color tint so let's go ahead and first let's just make it larger so I'm gonna go ahead and increase the scale uh, heck I'll go all the way up to the max value of the slider which is 500 but hint you can go way beyond that if you enter the values uh, into this uh, input field but let's go ahead and and center this up and just take a look at what we have. And you can see, if I zoom in a little bit, this is a really smooth gradient. So this is a really solid way to do this. It, it does seem hacky, but uh, it actually will produce really smooth, uh, high quality um, radial gradients. So let's go ahead and color this now. Uh, this looks good, but I think we can do even better. So let's use our color tint. And since I'm in the visual effects bin, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop it on the media, and I'm just gonna crank the intensity and because we are dealing with a light ball, like a little, uh, you know, a light fall off, then you see that this uh, light tone is what's being mapped. And if I want to change those colors around, I can just select that. And I have a nice mint green there. Uh, I have an indigo here and, uh, and a blue here. And these all look, look really good. In fact, I think I might stay with the blue for this example, just for now. And, uh, and just like that, you have a really beautiful looking gradient falling off to black. Uh, now let's draw uh, maybe a shape behind it. Uh, now we could change the canvas color or we could just draw a rectangle. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna move this up to track two and I'm gonna draw a rectangle. So I'm gonna grab, I'm in my bold set still. I have a nice crisp uh, edge, whoops, rectangle and I'm just gonna draw it behind. Let me move it down to track one. I'm gonna draw it behind this, this gradient and you see this really nice fall off now is, is have this blue is falling off into white and it looks really beautiful. Uh, but you know what, I wanna change it to a darker blue. And so let's go over here and uh, let's see, whoops, I'm in the wrong box. I need to change the fill 
and maybe I'm in indigo, I'll grab the original blue that I colored this with and I'll just go darker. And now you have this really nice, subtle, uh, subtle gradient that you could use for all kinds of purposes on titles, uh, with your, with your call outs for track mats, other things that I can show you here, but I want to go further because this is all about motion graphics and we're in Camtasia, a really powerful animation tool. Um, how about we quickly make a really beautiful, uh, radial gradient treatment that we can leverage for, um, you know, section titles or intros. So let's go for it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and hide track one for now. And, uh, and I'm going to take this radial gradient source and I'm just going to move, move it over to the corner. Might make it a little bigger. In fact, I think I'll, I'll pull it over into this corner here. And you can see like already how, how many creative possibilities uh, are available to us here. And, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the lowest track here. Um, I just duplicated this, so I copied and pasted. And, and I'm going to take the, the lower gradient and I'm just going to stretch that out and then I'm going to go to the properties and go down to color tint and I'm going to select, um, let's see, what would be a good complementary color here? Uh, let's see what that periwinkle is, a, is an interesting fall off. I'm going to zoom in. But let's go a little more extreme. That looks pretty nice. Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, that, I think we will go with this one. And uh, let's see, let's go ahead and move this so we can find where the right lines are. You can see so much of this is like sauce making. You know, you're, you're kind of working to get the taste right uh, iteratively. And, uh, and let's go ahead and insert a track below, track two, because again, track one is just where we have that rectangle being stored right now. And if I turn it on, you can see I have an interesting effect emerging here. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and use uh, the radial gradients uh, throughout uh, all of these uh, the whole canvas as it were. So I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out now and again scroll down and let's change the color find another complementary color and that's pretty cool. Go for that nice um, you know goldish color and and just like that you can see we have we have whoops we have created something that is is quite dynamic um, quite beautiful and uh, and super easy to do so I might make this just a little bigger yeah, actually, I kind of like this in the corner, and uh, let me move the magenta up and out just a tad. And just like that, I have a really, really beautiful gradient. It almost looks like, um, you know, how, how steel looks when it's been, uh, you know, sort of licked with a flame, uh, tempered as it were. So let's go ahead and now turn this into an animation. So I'm going to go over to the behaviors bin. And I've got my reveal uh, default selected. And let's go ahead and select all three of these. Let me increase the size of my timeline here so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this on so it applies to all three at once. And uh, let's go ahead and mess with the, uh, the reveals here. Let's go ahead and turn off the in and turn off the out of this reveal. And let's just do a dur during. And uh, I'll increase the opacity. Uh, I'm going to go max out on the loop time and uh, and let's go ahead and and keep this just like this for now and I think we can tweak a couple more things as we go. So let's go ahead and preview what we have. So we get this nice pulsing uh, gradient effect. But the thing is is when we did the effect the same, you know, the same values on the on the uh, reveal behavior, uh, they all kind of go uniform and so we want to stagger it a bit. Uh, a couple ways we could do that. Uh, one way is to mess with the effect uh, directly here, but the way I think I want to play with it today is uh, I'm going to go ahead and and I'm going to apply um, a little bit of a duration, duration hack here. So I'm going to move this in a little, and you can see how I'm just kind of staggering these, okay, so that they start at different rates, and, uh, and let's just go ahead and, and see what happens when we do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and group these up and let's see how we can use them in a background or maybe even an overlay. Let's take a look. This is a really cool effect. So I've grouped them up and I'm gonna go ahead and rename the group uh, Radial Gradient. Uh, how about I'll just make that plural. And uh, let's, let's look at this. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's add a little animation arrow to this. I wanna make a nice little subtle, uh, I'd say like a three second long uh, animation from zero opacity to full opacity and that's just going to give a more cinematic look so that it doesn't so abruptly come on the screen and let's see how that looks 
nice and smooth. And you can see we have, you know, sort of this nice subtle animation happening. But what if we want to use it as an overlay? So what we can do is we can just lay it right over talking head footage like this. Look at how beautiful this is. You could have your brand colors in this. You could have uh, whatever the theme of your uh, tutorial is over uh, over your talking head video and have a really nice look, something that looks uh, sort of akin to an Instagram filter. Um, but the way I like to use these is uh, as backgrounds for title treatments. So check out this title treatment. It's available in, in the description. Um, I have a link there to my library, which is filled with assets. In fact, uh, here's a couple of the other assets you get in that library. It's totally free. And uh, I encourage you to download it add it to your Camtasia and deconstruct all of this. Uh, I have tutorials for most of the content in that library uh, that you can come back to my channel to follow along to see how I actually made them and get a sense of what the actual workflow is or the sort of mindset is into uh, pushing our, uh, this beautiful little tool called Camtasia to the limit. So I hope you uh, learned something today. If you did, be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe so that you can get future content from me here because I have some really cool tutorials in the works that I want you to check out. So I hope you enjoyed. Let's take a look at this uh, treatment one more time. Good luck with your video creation and we'll talk to you soon.